Now, we will discuss Bayes theorem. Before that, let us discuss one particular theorem. It is not, it is known as total probability theorem or theory of total probability, law of total probability. So, let us discuss that. total probability total probability theorem or law of total probability so what it says so already we discussed this kind of theorem before also let us uh, here we are repeating again let a1 a2 an b a set of pair wise mutually exclusive and exhaustive uh, let a 1 a 2 a n be a set of pair wise mutually exclusive exhaustive uh, events set of pairwise mutually exclusive and exhaustive events or we can say that let a1, a2, a and b pairwise mutually exclusive and ex exhaustive set of events, set of events, events. So, what does it mean? So, pairwise mutually exclusive means a i intersection a j this is equal to phi if i not equal to j and uh, mutually exclusive and exhaustive set of events means union of a 1 union a 2 union a n is equal to the sample space s. So, that means suppose this is the sample space then this is this is just a partition. So, this is a 1 this is a 2 this is a 3 a 4 like this a 5 here 5. So, if they are they are pairwise mutually exclusive they are disjoint set pairwise and also if you take the union it will be s. Yes. Then, then for any event you can consider uh, the notation event may be b suppose any event b uh, probability of b can be written as represented as summation of i is equal to 1 to n probability b given a i into probability of a i. So, this is the conditional probability of. So, this is same as i is equal to 1 to n probability b intersection a i. So, this is we have already proved actually. So, let us do it again and this is the just a different expression only. So, now uh, because they are uh, a 1 a 2 a n are pairwise disjoint and exhaustive set of events. So, uh, also a is a event. So, a is a subset of s uh, sorry b is a event uh, since b is a event b is an event b is a subset of s. Hence, b can be written as B intersection S. Now S each A S can be represented as because A1, A2, A N are pair wise disjoint as well as a exhaustive set of events. So this union is S. Now if you use uh, the distributive properties, so then this can be represented as B1, B intersection A1, union B intersection A2, union B intersection A N. So, now all this set will be pairwise disjoint because if you take i not equal to j then uh, b intersection a i intersection b intersection a j this is nothing but b intersection a i intersection a j because a i a j are pairwise disjoint this will be phi. So, that is why they are disjoint uh, they are pairwise disjoint. Now, you uh, using theorem 1.5. So, this is just a finite uh, version of the axiom 3.
probability of B can be represented as probability that actually theorem 1.5 it is used here B intersection A1 union B intersection A2 union B intersection A n because they are pairwise disjoint here we will use this theorem 1.5 says that we can add probability of B intersection A1 plus probability of B intersection A2 because they are pairwise disjoint plus probability of B intersection A n. So, that is the this expression we got it. Now, so that means now this B intersection A n can be represented as B given A 1 into probability of A 1. So, that can be found suppose uh, so, so here you can see that probability that B intersection A i suppose. So, what is the conditional probability? This by definition this is nothing but probability that B gain intersection A i by probability of A i assuming that probability of A i not equal to 0 which implies probability of B intersection A i can be represented as probability of B given A i into probability of A i. So, for i is equal to 1 to n. So, hence that can be represented as this is probability of B given A 2 into probability of A 2 plus probability of B given A n into probability of A n. So, that can be in short form we can write it summation of i is equal to 1 to n probability of B given A i into probability of A i. So, this is useful we will discuss whenever it is uh, for the base theorem. Uh, also, uh, uh, there are some examples also where total probability for computing this kind of probability. This probability suppose it is given B given A i and probability of A i, then any event B can be represented in this way. Now, we will discuss the base theorem. So, base theorem uh, you may have heard or learned. So, that is uh, if you have learned it, so then it will be a, a very simple to understand, but I am assuming that you do not know this theorem. So, I will discuss very slowly and uh, from the beginning I will discuss each and uh, by giving a one examples and some more examples also will study to understand the base theorem. So, base theorem is uh, very much useful from the data set sometimes some of the conditional probabilities are known very uh, straightforward to known, but, but the uh, other way the like uh, kind of the inverse uh, uh, this is uh, not known. For example, suppose uh, we have a uh, attendance of the students we have some data and uh, based on the rainfall like uh, a day is rainy day or non rainy day this probability that uh, the uh, student is present during the rainy day uh, the given that the day is a rainy day uh, this may be known and also uh, probability that the student will be absent and uh, given that the uh, this the day is rainy or non uh, not rainy day or sunny day uh, that probability also be uh, can be known. But uh, also uh, there that day will be rainy or not uh, rainy that uh, from the data set also that probability known. Now, suppose we ask the question in the opposite. Suppose a student is um, absent in the class or present in the class and then uh, what is the probability that that, uh, that day is rainy. So, the probability that the given that the day is rainy finding the probability that uh, the student is present or absent given that the day, day is rainy that probability uh, finding is straightforward from the uh, data set. But uh, from the opposite like the uh, suppose if you ask the question we, we know that the, uh, uh, the student is uh, present or absent in the class uh, what is the probability that that day uh, the uh, that day is a rainy day or not. So, the, uh, that very much useful. Uh, so, that we will discuss again more examples we will uh, discuss. Here consider a manufacturing firm that receives shipment of parts from two suppliers. So, there are two suppliers. So, so suppose uh, there are supplier 1 and supplier 2. So, supplier 1 and supplier 2 and uh, the manufacturer company taking some parts from supplier 1 and supplier 2 and that parts actually some parts is uh, here. So, it is from the supplier 1. So, we say that uh, this um, uh, even it is defined like uh, A 1 and A 2. So, A 1 is that probability that the parts will be from supplier 1, A probability that A 1, A 1 is the event is that the uh, part will be from supplier 1. So, it is given that this information is given. 
consider a manufacturing firm that receives shipment of parts from two suppliers. Let A1 denote the event that a part is received from the supplier 1, A2 is the event that part is received from the supplier 2. Now, we get 65 percent of our parts from supplier 1, that means probability that if you take a from by uh, simple uh, just um, uh, 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 approach uh, like uh, classical approach, suppose uh, there are for 65 percent is given that means it is the probability uh, of that uh, any parts if you take, uh, what is the probability that it is from the supplier 1, the probability of A1 is 65 percent 0.65, probability of A1 is 0 0.65, so this is 65 percent. And the probability of A2 it will be 1 minus of that, this is nothing but probability of A2 this is uh, 0 0.35, 1 minus 65. So, this is uh, 35 percent that it is from supplier 2. Now, if you condition on the data that it is from the supplier 1, what is the probability that it is a bad, this part is a bad part and what is the probability that it is a good part? So, that also we know. So, that means probability that it is a good, the parts is good, it is given that it is from the supplier 1 and probably that it is a part is bad, it is from the supplier 2. So, analyzing the data it can be found. So, this is also given here. So, here it is that quality of the levels, the percent parts good, good part from this uh, it is from the supplier 1 given that it is from the supplier 1 it is 98 percent. So, this is it is a good 0 0.98 and uh, this is 98 percent, so good part and uh, this is uh, from it is a bad part given from the supplier this is 1 minus of that 0 0.2. Similarly, uh, here also uh, the out of 35 percent this will be bad part uh, given that it is from the supplier to it is 95 percent. So, this is the part is good given that it is from the it is from the supplier to it is 0 0.95 obviously, the it will be bad it is from supplier to it is 0 0.05. So, it is 1 minus of that. So, so uh, the, all these information are very straightforward. Now, suppose it is happened that a bad part broke on of our machines, suddenly we found that a part is bad. So, we are through for the day, what is the probability that the part came from the supplier? So, uh, all these probabilities are given to us based on that it is asked given given a part is bad. So, that means b is given here we have to find the probability find the probability that it is from the supplier 1, it is asked this probability. So, given the a part is bad, what is the probability that the part is from supplier 1. So, that means this is the question, we have to find given B, what is the probability that it is from the supplier 2. Similarly, you can ask that what is the probability that it is from the supplier 2 also. If the part is bad, what is the probability from the supplier 1 and what is the probability from the supplier 2 also, you can ask. So, now so let us find out this probability, probability that A1 given B. So, this is nothing but probability of A1 intersection by definition by probability of B. So, probability of A1 intersection B just now we have seen that it can be represented by probability of B in A1 by into probability of A1. Because if you expand this, so later we will find this, probability the of B given A1, so this is nothing but probability of A intersection by definition by probability of A1 which implies A1 intersection B. So, probability of A1 intersection B can be represented as probability of B given A1 into probability of A1. So, that is why I written that and by probability of B. Now, how we can find the probability of B here? So, that is the question. So, this is this will we can compute by the theory of total probability. So, here you can see that A1 union A2, A1 union A2 is nothing but whole sample space S. 
So, that means A 1 is supplier 1, supplier 2, all the parts are coming from either supplier 1 or, or supplier 2, there is no in, any other parts. So, that from the other uh, supplier. So, all parts actually belongs to A 1 union A 2. So, that is equal to S. Also, they are disjoint. So, they are pairwise mutually disjoint. Here only two events. So, A 1 intersection A 2 is 5 because one of the any part if you consider it is from the either supplier 1 or from the supplier 2. It cannot be possible that it will be both of the uh, both of the suppliers. So, any parts. So, that is why they are disjoint. Hence, by total probability again we can do it. So, B can be because B is a subset of S, the bad part, it is a subset of S. So, B can be represented as B intersection S, which is nothing but B intersection A1 union A2. So, which is equal to uh, that then uh, by distributed property it is B intersection A1 union B intersection A2. Hence, because they are disjoint we have already uh, shown this B intersection A 1 intersection B intersection A 2 that is nothing but B intersection A 1 intersection A 2 which is B intersection this is null set because A 1 A 2 are null set this is phi. So, they are pairwise disjoint also. So, hence probability of B will be equal to probability of B intersection A 1 in union B intersection A 2 and because they are disjoint uh, using uh, assume 3 probability of B intersection A 1 plus probability of B intersection A 2 and that can be represented as probability of B given A 1 into probability of A 1 plus probability of B given A 2 into probability of A 2. So, this is the total probability we will replace here and this is called the base theorem for two event by probability of B, probability of B will be this. So, probability of B is nothing but probability of B given A 1 into probability of A 1 plus probability of B given A 2 into probability of A 2. So, uh, this is the probability of A 1 given B. Anyone can ask that what will be the probability that the part is bad, but it is coming from. So, what is the probability that it is coming from supplier 2? It can be found similarly A 2 intersection B by definition of conditional probability probability of A 2 given is nothing but probability of A 2 intersection B by probability of B and it can be represented as probability of B given A 2 into probability of A 2 by probability of B and probability of B just now we computed. So, this is probability of B given A 2 probability of A 2 by probability of uh, B given A 1 into probability of A 1 plus probability of B given A 2 into probability of A 2. So, note that so this is uh, 2 and this is 1. So, note that this will if you take the sum of probability of A 1 given B plus probability of A 2 given B this will be 1 because this is nothing but 1 minus of this. So, this value. So, now we will numerically we will compute all this value it is known to us. So, now probability of B given A 1 suppose we are also let us write down this one equation 1 again A 1 given B so that it can be visible here this is nothing but probability of B given A 1 into probability of A 1 by probability of B given A 1 into probability of A 1 plus probability of B given A 2 into probability of A 2. So, now you can see that this will be just sum of these two value will be nothing but 1. Now, we will replace the value here to find this. So, what is probability of B given A 1? Probability of B given A 1 is here it is 0 0.02. So, this is 0 0.02. What is probability of A 1? Probability of A 1 also given here it is 65 percent. So, 0 0.65, 0 0.65. So, then here 0 0.02 into, into 0 0.65 plus B given A 2. What is the probability that B given A 2? This is 0 0.05 this is 0 0.05 into uh, probability of A 2, probability of A 2 is given here 35 percent 0 0.35. So, then if you compute this uh, uh, numerically now whatever the value it will come. So, you have to use a calculator. So, here uh, all these things it is explained here. So, now you can see that uh, this is the base theorem for two events that we have already explained. And 
this is the computation 0 0.65 into 0 0.02, this value it is coming 0 0.4262. So, this value 0 0.4262. So, you can go through it again. So, this is whatever we explained here. So, that is also given in the slides and uh, A2 given B also uh, it is replaced. So, you can uh, try here. So, you replace this value, the numerical value and this is coming 0 0.5738. Now, if you add these two values, this should be equal to 1. So, this is the this is known as base theorem for two events. Now, we will discuss base theorem for n events. So, this is just extension of n events up to n events. Let let a 1, a 2, a n be pairwise, pairwise mutually exclusive and exhaustive set of events. So, let us see that these are the notation actually here it is given a 1 a 2 a n and for any event. So, this is the notation it is followed as a set of events the, then for any event for any event b. So, this will be in a sigma field here we assume that the sample space s and sigma field c we are following the similar notation for any event b. So, that means, it will be a subset of s for any event b probability that for suppose if you consider any i, i that suppose i supplier here n number supplier ai that bad part ai given b it can be represented as probability that b given ai into probability of ai by summation of j is equal to 1 to n probability of b given a j into probability of a j. So, now what is the proof? So, similarly it can be proved for two events it is just a extension up to n events. So, very straightforward we will just go through it. So, probability that for here for i is equal to 1 to up to n this is a i is fixed here for you, you take a 1 given g b a 2 given b you can find the probability just uh, changing the value of i. So, now for fixing i, i belongs to 1 to n probability of a i b given b can be represented as probability of a i intersection b by probability of b by conditional probability assuming that probability of b not equal to 0 definition of conditional probability and this can be represented as probability of b given a i into probability of a i by probability of b. Now, from the theory of total probability this probability of b can be computed. So, b can be represented as since b is subset of s since b subset of s b can be represented as b, b intersection s. So, b intersection because a 1 a 2 a n are pairwise mutually and exhausted uh, set of events in union of a i is s. So, this can be represented as i is equal to 1 to infinitive sorry not infinitive a n up to n 1 to n by distributive property we can write that they are pair, pairwise uh, disjoint. So, probability b can be rep represented as so, I am just writing uh, shortly because we have already discussed several times probability of union i is equal to 1 to n b intersection a i. Now, uh, because they are pairwise disjoint by axiom 3 or, or theorem 1.5 this is nothing but summation i is equal to 1 to n probability of b intersection a i. So, that can be represented as probability i is equal to 1 to n probability of b given a i into probability of a i. So, this is the probability of b we replace here 
So, then we finally we get this is the base theory B given A i into probability of A i. So, I made the mistake because here we take fix, fixing i. So, I we cannot use this variable again here. So, this is we will take j is equal to 1 to n. Here also we will take j is equal to 1 to n, j is equal to 1 to n because i is fixed here some value you can change one of the value then you will get probability of i given b. So, this is nothing but summation of j is equal to 1 to n probability of b given a j into probability of a j. So, this is the base theorem just I uh, proved it because uh, these things already we have done of uh, theory of pro total probability when we discussed and then uh, this is uh, by we can replace our probability of b it is just a conditional probability definition of conditional probability and we are getting this is also a discussed how it is coming. So, this is the base theorem. So, let us do uh, we have already discussed one example. So, this is the base theorem for n events. So, it is given here uh, you can go through again and uh, now let us discuss one example numerical example. So, there are 100 patients in a hospital with a certain disease of these 10 selected to undergo a drug treatment that increase the percentage Q rate from 50 percent to 75 percent. So, here it is actually given that. So, whenever someone getting a treatment, so uh, a patient uh, got the treatment we denote the event is T and if patient did not get the treatment then we even even we denote by T complement. So, just we write that T be the event that the patient got the treatment. So, then it is already given that if patient may be cured. So, C we denote the event that the patient is cured and C complement that the patient has the disease or it is uh, patient. So, hospital 10 percent selected uh, ok. Uh, what is the probability that the patient receive a drug treatment if the patient is known to be cured. So, patient is cured C uh, the patient is. So, patient uh, each cure. So, C denote th for the event that random variable that the uh, sorry it is a event that the patient is cured and T is the event that the patient got the the patient uh, patient uh, this is 10 percent selected undergo drug treatment undergo undergo a drug treatment. So, patient uh, got the uh, received the uh, drug treatment. So, the patient uh, oh, oh, sorry it is not coming patient undergo a drug treatment. treatment and T complement is the patient did not uh, uh, undergo the drug treatment. So, what is the probability that the patient received a drug treatment? So, let us denote ok. So, suppose C denote that the patient is cured and C complement is the complement of that and T denote that the patient received received the drug treatment. So, T complement will be complement that, that means that patient is did not receive the drug treatment C is the patient is cured. So, now what are the possible probability it is given? So, it is given that uh, there are 100 patient in a hospital with a certain disease of this 10 are selected to undergo a drug treatment. So, 10 percent actually uh, got the so out of 100 probably that how uh, what is that the patient received the drug treatment the probability of t will be uh, 10 percent of the patient got the uh, drug treatment. So, this is 0 0.1 and probability of t complement this is nothing but 1 minus of that 0 0.9. So, here in this case uh, if we uh, represent it in our base theorem. So, a 1 will be t and a 2 will be t complement and a 1 union a 2 will be all patients this is the all Humphrey space. And also any patient either it received the drug treatment or it did not uh, he did not uh, the patient did not get the receive the uh, drug treatment. So, A 1 intersection A 2 will be null set. 
So, that is uh, we found from this uh, problem. So, that now 10 are selected to undergo drug treatment that increase the percentage of cure rate from 50 percent to 75 percent. So, that means if the patient receive the drug treatment then the cure rate is 75 percent. So, it is the conditional probability it is given here. So, probability that the patient is cured given that the it got the drug treatment this is nothing but 75 percent 0.75. And probably that the patient is cured given that it did not receive the uh, drug treatment, it is nothing but 50 percent. So, it is this information. So, we have to actually uh, formulate this problem uh, by the events so that because the theorem, base theorem, it is uh, represented by events. So, we have to, but in the problem, it is some percentage patients, uh, it is uh, written um, just uh, by a uh, sentences or some uh, explanation it is given, but we have to represent it, we have to transform it in the form of our formula. So, so that we can use the formula base theorem. So, here uh, we have to understand that there are 100 patients, 10 are selected undergo a drug treatment. That means, 10 percent of the patient got the treatment probability of T is the 10 percent 10 by 100 0.1. So, T complement will be 0.9. Now, it is given that uh, in, uh, the drug treatment that increases the percent of, the, of cure rate from 50 percent to 75 percent. That means, the patient is cured given that the patient got the drug treatment it is 50 percent probability that the patient is cured given that the uh, patient got the drug treatment uh, uh, earlier the patient is cured given that the patient did not receive the drug treatment it is 50 percent. And then it is increased that means, the patient is cured given that the patient uh, received the drug treatment is 75 percent. So, uh, that is represented. So, uh, given T complement is 50 percent, given T is 75 percent, 70 percent, 75 percent. Now, uh, what is the question now? Question is that, what is the probability that the patient received a drug treatment? So, that means, uh, T is given here, T is given here and uh, if the patient is known to be cured, no, uh, this is given, patient is known to be cured. So, C is given here patient is known to be cure and what is the probability that patient received a dark, dark treatment. So, what is the probability that T patient received a dark, dark treatment, the patient received the dark treatment given that uh, the uh, it is known that the patient is cured. So, this probability it is asked. Uh, see that all this given all this probability this can not be found straight forward we have to use the, uh, the base theorem only. By base theorem it is nothing but probability that C given T into probability of T by probability of C given T into probability of T plus probability of C given T bar into probability of T bar. So, assume that T is nothing but A 1 and T 2 is T bar is nothing but A 2 and C is nothing but B in the uh, base theorem, then it is B given A 1. So, it is nothing but A 1 given B. So, A 1 given B is nothing but B given A 1 into probability of A 1 by probability of uh, B given A 1 into probability of A 1 plus probability of B given A 2 into probability of A 2. So, you can see the base theorem for two events what we discussed. So, here this is the uh, probability of A 1 given B nothing but probability of A 1 into probability of B given A 1 by probability of A 1 into probability of B given A 1 plus probability of A 2 into probability of B given A 2. So, if you uh, uh, if you relate this variable in this way, then you can use the, the base theorem here. So, then we will just find out. So, probability of C given T it is known 0.75 into uh, probability of T, probability of T is 0.1 by 0 0.C given T is 0.75 into 0.1 plus probability of C given T complement is given 0.50 plus into uh, P, P of T complement. P of T complement is nothing but uh, 0.9. So, 0 0.9. So, just uh, you have to calculate, you need a calculator. So, uh, actually this value not provided here. So, you can compute it using a calculator and you can find out the value. So, this will be the final answer. So, uh, you can find out the uh, closed uh, what is the final value, simplified form of this value. So, so, this is one example that how you can use the base theorem. So, uh, you can uh, go through more numerical problems. So, uh, then uh, you, uh, you will understand more clearly how to use the base theorem. So, this is uh, here only two uh, numerical examples we started. So, there are many other numerical examples you can find.
find uh, to use the Bayes theorem, how to solve the Bayes theorem and then it will be more clear to you. So, that we completed uh, the first part here, this uh, discussion of the uh, this uh, definition of probability starting from the sample space, uh, definition of events, sigma field say or sigma algebra. Then we discussed classical approach, axiomative approach, uh, before, before that classical approach, frequency approach and then uh, what are the drawbacks, then we discussed axiomatic approach of defining probability and then we discussed some of the important theorems, we proved those theorems, some numerical example we studied and then we discussed uh, what are the conditional probability and uh, the applications and then we discussed independence, what is the difference between independence and mutually exclusive events and then total probability theorem and then we finally we discussed the base theorem. So, base theorem we discussed two numerical examples. So, I, I hope you are following and you understood and then you can solve many more problems using these results.